This is not a Nuzlocke tier list, but me being a professional Nuzlocker with thousands of hours of experience is still kind of relevant to this video. It's not a tier list at all, actually. It's just me giving every Pokemon in existence a numerical ranking between 0 and 100 and then ordering them from worst to best. The ranking is just based on how much joy that Pokemon sparks within me or how much despair it sparks within me. I wanted to do this because I made a very similar list in 2019, which is before my big nuzlocking time, and I wanted to see how much nowadays of my opinions of these Pokemon is influenced by Nuzlocke runs that I've done. The least interesting parts of these rankings are all the Pokemon that are just mid. These are all Pokemon that are ranked anywhere between a 40 and a 60, the top of the bell curve, so to speak. So I'm just gonna blitz those by real quick. We're gonna do the middle first, and then we're gonna do the bottom, and then we're gonna do the top. Does that make sense? Okay, stay with me, this is gonna be really fast. These are all Pokemon that are just fine, serviceable, whatever. And while those zip by, let me tell you about today's sponsor. So I'm, um, <sighs> Not financially irresponsible, but I have developed some bad spending habits. Listen, sometimes I have weeks where I start my day by ordering Starbucks to my house every day. This is really bad, but it's one of those things that can be really hard to identify as a really bad thing money-wise if you don't have something that monitors your spending. One of the easiest ways to become more financially responsible is actually to make a budget and that's where Rocket Money comes in. Rocket Money will automatically monitor all of your spending by category. It will actually give you notifications if you're going over a certain budget. Simply also just being able to set a budget and visualize how much you're actually spending on something will allow you to get a much better idea of how much money you can actually be saving each month. Speaking of saving money each month, Rocket Money also cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. It identifies recurring charges really quickly and cancels them for you with just one tap of a button. Listen, I, I was paying for a gym in a city that I didn't live in for two years because I forgot. That wouldn't have happened with Rocket Money. That was a lot of money that I could have saved. So that's, that's uh, it, was like, it was like 40 bucks a month for like two years. Anyway, Rocket Money can even lower your bills for you. If you upload your bills, they can negotiate better prices with your internet service or phone providers. If you'd like to take the first step into getting a better grip on your finances and kind of having a little bit of a better idea what you're spending your money on, go to rocketmoney.com slash Pokemon Challenges or the link in the description to get started for free. You get even more features with premium as well. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash Pokemon Challenges. Thank you, Rocket Money, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the rankings of the actually good Pokemon. <sighs> Starting at the bottom, the worst Pokemon, in my opinion, is none other than Gotharita. And just, like, why... why does this exist? This whole line. The idea is just goth. And, like, I like goth, okay? I like goth girls. I'm a big fan. But what the hell is this? I, I've ranted about this before on this channel, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. Gotharita takes the biggest hit here because it is the middle stage, so it symbolizes the fact that they thought this was such a good idea they had to make three? How is this even a psychic type Pokemon? None of this makes sense. None of this should exist. I, I, I'm just I'm just baffled by it. The, the fact that anyone at Game Freak thought this was a a, a good idea for a Pokemon. Gotharita is the worst Pokemon in existence, and it's not even close. Let me tell you about another Pokemon that's always pissed me off, and that's Poliwhirl. And I also ask myself, why does this Pokemon exist? You know that the, the, the saying about character design? Good character design means you can recognize it by its silhouette? Why, why is Poliwhirl and Poliwrath the same Pokemon? Why does Poliwhirl even need to exist? It, it makes no sense. It could have gone Poliwagon and Poliwrath. I don't understand. They have this interesting, like, tadpole idea. It's like, oh, but what if the tadpole doesn't become a frog? That's a cool idea. Go with that. It doesn't follow like a traditional three evolution structure. It doesn't go like one, two, three. It goes one, three, three. What the fuck is the point of the existence of this Pokemon? Anyway. Okay, so when Gimmigul was revealed, I tweeted about it. Like, I understand its design. I understand what it's supposed to be. And I think Goldengo is pretty cool. Did this Pokemon need to look this dog shit? Like, why does it look like someone drew like a gingerbread person in MS Paint? What? I, I don't under... They couldn't put a little bit more work into it? It's cool conceptually, it's just like they didn't want to go through. They just gave up on it. Speaking of things that look like they're very crudely drawn from that generation, Spidops looks like if you 
asked a four-year-old who had never heard of Marvel before to draw what they think Spider-Man looks like. I'm normally not a Gen 9 hater, but there's just a lot of big misses here. Iron Jugulus? You didn't even try, bro. What is this? Um, I'm not gonna go too much into too many of the regional forms in this video. I just wanna give a shout out at this point to whatever Alolan Diglett and Alolan Geodude and Alolan Graveler were supposed to be. How are these regional variants? You just added hair. Next up on the list is a Pokemon that is just straight up ugly. Like, I, I, I feel like they didn't know where to go with this Pokemon and just the proportions are all over the place. The colors are all over the place. It's, yeah, it, it, it could have been a cool concept, but I feel like you tried too hard to go both Abominable Snowman and Crab. You picked like the worst parts of each of the designs and made it really ugly. Who asked for this and who does it? Who does this serve? And how does this expand upon the design? Clang? I, I will never understand how this was the evolution progression for Kling Clang. Why did they, why were these even separate Pokemon? Barbarical? Horribly ugly. It is just unpleasant to look at in every sense of the word. The pre-evolution sets up something, I think, but I, I think this is not it at all. Blitzel was a cool design and then we just made it longer and it's got like the two jolts on its head and like this is such a lazy evolution design my god next up on the list is floet and listen obviously all of these are going to be based on my personal taste but some of them are going to be really specific and, and probably things that aren't even like noticeable for you or that you don't care about but it's my list Go fuck yourself. The things on Floet's ears make it look like a weird action figure and it doesn't fit the design of the line at all. Next up is Garbodor, which is an amazing concept done completely horribly. They were like, oh, we're gonna make it a mountain of trash. And then they drew the outline and they gave up. And it's especially sad because the Gigantamax version of this Pokemon actually does that concept well. Next up is Heatmore. It's got the whole rivaler going with the ant, which is cool, but this Pokemon is so disgustingly ugly. What what did they do with? Why is it like? Why does it look like that? Overquill. Just come on, man. Uh, Alolomola next on the list. A lot of people complain that this should have been Love Disc's evolution, and like I don't really care about that. I think they're conceptually supposed to be different. The fact that most people think that it should have been the evolution just shows that you went for a lazy design path that you've already taken but you did it for a different concept and now people are confused golbat is just <sighs> big mouth with wings and it, it just doesn't work at all in my opinion but more importantly this pokemon is so annoying to use in nuzlocke it's just not good it doesn't learn any good moves its stats are so underwhelming luckily in most runs you're never going to use it because you just instantly get your crowbat but there is somewhere you kind of have to uh next up i got palpitoad and seismitoad and these two were just introduced at a point where like there was no need for another water ground type line at all and then also the first evolution in this line kind of sets up like a musical note singing kind of vibe and the evolutions don't follow up on that at all and then also seismitoad is just ridiculously ugly. Litleo just looks like a plushie, but I think it's unintentional and that's bad. Next on the list I have Diglett, and to me Diglett was just always like, you couldn't like think of something cooler here? <laughs> it, it, it's just a little too simple, huh? Cherubi, you forgot that that Pokemon exists and you will after I've mentioned it here. Conceptually, a dragon type that's not very powerful, cool, but why does it have to look like I tried to draw a custom Digimon in second grade. Needle Queen, next up. It's the boobs. I, it's the boobs. Because what they were doing conceptually, they were forced to make a baby Pokemon of Jinx. Jinx is not suited for that, and this is the result. Who asked for this Pokemon? Why did they make this? Quilladin, how obvious do you have to make it in the design of the Pokemon that it shit its pants. It, it has to be intentional. Pincurchin. I, I feel like this was already done with Stunfisk and that was like way better. And this is just like, oh, we have to make an urchin po Pokemon. And, and then they, they go to like the laziest stuff imaginable. And that's just it. We Weedle just doesn't do a lot from, I don't understand what they're going for here. It doesn't look like a bug or a, it, it, does, it doesn't look like anything. Uh, bonus sweet, you forgot that this Pokemon exists and you will after this video. Next I have the Mat 
Chop, Machoke, Machamp line, they just all make me really uncomfortable in like an Uncanny Valley vibe, and I, I just don't want to see them um, get them off my screen. Azuril, another Pokemon that I don't understand why it was made at all. Uh, next we have Manic Trick. It looks so corny, man. Come on. Patrat and Watchog. Why did they have to go with those eyes, man? Like, nobody likes these guys. They add nothing to anyone's life. Bruxish, again, and just another horribly ugly Pokemon for no reason. Thanks for putting that in the decks. Appreciate it. Wormadam. What the hell were they going for here? A lot of these are just going to be me not understanding what the underlying design principle or idea was and just being confused by it. And if you can enlighten me about what was going on, I would really appreciate that because I don't know what this is. Next up, I got the entire Haxorus line, which is just the laziest pseudo-legendary possible. You tried so hard to make these guys badass, and you failed so miserably. They just have no character whatsoever. Vivillon and Mothim are up next. They, they were just both a butterfly that we did not need. Uh, next up is Spinarak. The, it's, it's, it's the black and yellow stripes on the legs for me that just don't make any sense conceptually on the design. Elemental Monkeys! All of these are terrible and lazy, and nobody cares about them. Maybe if they weren't forced on me like that, I would feel a little bit better about them. Gumshoes is just ugly and has no direction to go into design-wise. Obstagoon is another example like the Gotharita line of a Pokemon who just conceptually should not exist. I just, I don't like when a Pokemon is just a straight up pop culture reference. Oh, what if Zigzagoon but Kiss? There's so much going on here. This is such a cluttered design and it ends up looking like nothing, or I guess a Bic lighter. Lickitung, this is just another Pokemon from Gen 1 where they were like, what if there was one with like, a really big tongue, and that's that's where the conversation ended. They did, just did not go on with it. Uh, if you're gonna make a Pika clone, make them interesting, and don't design them in like the most obvious way possible. Like just putting the plus and minus sign on them. There was more to to, to do here. Uh, next up, Pyroar. While not unintentionally looking like a stuffed animal, these are still just horrendously ugly. Necrozma is like, didn't we already do this with Curem? But like better. What an uninteresting Pokemon. There's nothing here. Uh, Fido and Daxbun is next. These are just... I feel like there was more to do here with the idea of, like, a Pokemon going from dough to a baked thing. It's just, yeah, we put it in the oven and it evolved, and it's like, cool. Does anyone else feel like there's too many dogs in Pokemon now? Can we stop? Bombardier! There's too many things going on here. It's the bird that brings the babies but it also throws rocks at people, but it's a dark type. It's not a rock type. I, what is, what is, what is this deal? It's, there's too much going on here. Shiftry just has very ugly proportions and I don't like looking at it. Uh, LGM and Behem, there's this image going around going into uh, all the little design details about these Pokemon. And that's really cool and awesome. Um, but nobody gives a shit. The next is just a list of a bunch of fairy types that are vaguely hinted at to look like some sort of food. All of these don't inspire anything. Ting Lu, the proportions on this make no sense and it makes for a design that looks like it should fall over any moment. It's the rubber chicken, but it's on fire. You've all seen the image. It's not, it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, it also looks so much like Firo. This is supposed to be a legendary bird and the fire one at that, like how do you fuck that up? Next up is Ludicolo. It's not because of the Glacia, it's not, it's not because of the Glacia crits. Grottle. Does anyone feel like this one is just unfinished? Like they just kind of didn't give a shit about this one. Hydreigon is just such a poor attempt at making like a Hydra. I feel like you've got too much stuff going on. The the thing opening up looks too much like a flower. It, it doesn't, the fact that it just ends in like this weird like one tail, it, it just doesn't make it look cool. Deden, if you're gonna make a Pika clone, please make it interesting. And this one is gonna be really specific, but its shell is, on its head again because they didn't really know what to do with the this this one doesn't make any sense to me uh next up is the intellion line because i just cannot figure out what the progression like the emotional progression of the evolution is supposed to be here i it makes we're gonna see some good examples of this in the good half of the video he's crying a lot as a kid and then he's like an emo teenager and then he becomes secret agent i i just don't see what what this is supposed to be. Eldegoss. When this Pokemon came out, I feel like we we already had like four Pokemon that were exactly this design, but what do I know? Capsa Kid. If you just saw this design in a vacuum without seeing Scovillain, 
it would make no sense to you. It would be completely incomprehensible. Veluza is another Pokemon where I feel like we've already seen five different versions of this Pokemon. Hitmonchan. What an ugly piece of shit. What's wrong with your face, man? Skitty and Delcatty are just such uninspired designs. I, I just, it's cat. Okay. Crawdont. Those are not his lips, but they look like its lips. And every time I look at it, I think those are its lips. And that has ruined the Pokemon for me. Shellgon. Did you guys use these in the US or is this like a German thing? These look like those like leather, they're, they're called like medicine balls that w you used to have in gym class for like dumb shit. It just reminds me of that and I have gym class trauma because I was a nerdy kid. Cricketoon, I just don't understand what this Pokemon design is going for at all. Ambipom, what an ugly fucking Pokemon. It is just not joyful to look at at all and it's tail ends look like blown up medical gloves. Rhyperior, another evolution ad in Gen 4 that makes no sense. Gen 4 evolutions are so hit and miss, um, because I have a lot of the good ones on the good list, but, like, you tried so hard to make, like, a more badass Rhydon when Rhydon was already so complete in its design. Togedemaru, if you're gonna make a Pika clone, blah blah blah. Cosmoem, I, I, this Pokemon probably has some story reason to exist, but I don't know about it, and I don't care to learn about it. Similarly, Glastrier, Spectrier, and Calyrex will just never qualify as real Pokemon to me because I never played the Sword and Shield DLC, and I never will. Palmy, Palmo, and Palmot are are just like, are at this point in the series, are we not over this kind of design? Like, can we like move on to more interesting and unique stuff, maybe? Oddish and Venonat are two Pokemon from Gen 1 that are just like spheres with shit attached to them. There's more examples of this, but others have made more interesting. Also, speaking of Gen 1 seal, the name and then also the tail looking like a cartoon water spout, it's just very on the nose. Next up, I have a small group of Pokemon that all suffer from the same issue in my opinion. And it's not going to seem like these have anything in common, but hear me out on this, okay? Unknown, Vespiquen, Spiritomb, and Wishiwashi. And I think all these Pokemon, what they all have in common, they all represent a failure to make a really interesting design for a Pokemon that is a swarm of more things. Unknown is a little bit more abstract here, that's obviously not what they were going for in the beginning, but I think there was like an opportunity for like a mega unknown down the line that is like all one, all the ones combined or something, right? Spiritomb is like a bunch of different souls in its lore, but it, its design kind of reflects that, but it doesn't really, like gameplay wise, doesn't really do anything with that. And then Vespiquen kind of tries to do something with it because the animations for defend order, attack order, and heal order are all like little bees coming in, but like that doesn't really make sense because Combi is the is the bee, right? But it's not combies, it's just actual bees. And then also, all three of those moves aren't actually mechanically interesting or represent that at all. They're just they're just reskins of moves that basically already exist. And then Wishiwashi is the one where they really tried to go for it with like an ability and everything, but I feel like even that one just falls a little bit short. Maybe it's just because I don't like the look of the big wishy-washy. I wish it was just an actual swarm. Next up is Mesprit. Um, I actually have the other Lake Spirits quite high on the list. I just think this one is like, so we got the three Lake Spirits, right? We got the, and, and this was cool because they tried to, this is something I'm going to point out a lot, is when they try to represent a design element of the Pokemon within its gameplay mechanics. That's something that's really important to me, especially someone who Nuzlocke's a lot, because that's the way that I experience the game. Zelf is the super offensive one. Yuxi is the super defensive one, and then they didn't have an idea for Mesprit, and it's just really awkward and in between. Rashiram's name is just really ugly. Meloetta, the design is just way too obvious with the notes and the, the note line, it's just, it's just so on the nose. Scatterbug and Spupa, uh, I honestly forgot that those Pokemon existed until I looked at this list. Boltund, another Pokemon where, like, in at this point in the release, schedule of Pokemon, aren't we like kind of done with just fast electric dogs? Didn't we have a lot of those? Magmar's head has an ass on it. Vaporeon, this actually has nothing to do with the stupid unfunny copy pasta that meme really needs to die. It's, just, it's not even that the joke itself is that unfunny, it's, it's that you guys, every single one of you has run it completely into the ground like you do with everything that's good and valuable. I just don't think Vaporeon's design works that well. I, I don't really like the tail that becomes a fin and the it's not very coherent to me. I don't like its neck thing. Why does Cactron look like it's just a dude in like a thick bodysuit? That, that doesn't make any sense. Muna. This Pokemon is so puntable. 
I want to kick it so bad. I want to kick it so fucking bad. I'm going to get into Whirlipede later on because I actually think that Pokemon's great, but I feel like Venipede and Scallopede fail to follow through on like an interesting progression and Scallopede especially looks just like this weird centaur. Venipede is just kind of too uninteresting. It doesn't set anything up and Scallopede doesn't reward the progression at all. I just, none of it makes sense to me. Uh, Petlil and Lilligant, another set of Pokemon that when it released, even in Gen 5, I felt like this Pokemon had been done like three times before. Same for Basculin actually, and also Maractus. Uh, Minchino and Chinchino is another Pokemon where it's just like, the Gen 5 decks could have been a bit smaller. Like these could have been one Pokemon. Cobalion looks like it got bullied in high school. Volcanion is the silliest excuse that we've gotten for a water fire type, and I will never forgive it because we never actually got a cool fire water type instead. Choodle's face just makes me very angry. Indeedee is like, didn't we already have Audino? So Electrode and Amoongus um, have the same rating here, and actually Fungus and Voltorb later on will also have the same rating. Both of them have the same rating for the same reason, is that they follow up a very interesting design in an extremely boring way. Voltorb's design is actually really genius, and I'll get into that later, um, but Electrode is just like, well, we gotta evolve this, I guess we're gonna flip it and make it angry. Matang is just a failed middle stage, I think, because they were setting up something cool between Beldum and Metagross, that was like, okay, it's like the building parts and they come together, but Matang is not half of Metagross, it is Metagross minus two legs. It, it just, it, it makes the evolution very unsatisfying in my opinion. Drapion is just such a failure of a Pokemon. It, it, we, there, there was room for a cool Scorpion and this thing looks like an accordion. Nobody cares about Fiony and Manaphy. Grubbin and Chargebug just fail to set up Vikavolt to be a satisfying evolution. These three Pokemon are too different. Vikavolt is kind of cool. Grubbin and Chargebug don't lead up to it properly, in my opinion. Knackly, Knacklestack, and Garganackle are actually kind of cool designs, but unfortunately, Minecraft exists, so these will always look like Minecraft mobs to everyone, and uh, that's that's not good. That's very jarring. Cleffa and Igglybuff, was that necessary? Do we need tiny versions of these guys? My problem with Silcoon and Cascoon is similar to the one with Poliwhirl, where I just think they needed to be more differentiated. Um, their silhouettes are just the same, and it's actually kind of detrimental to the design. Ninkata just makes me angry because it's the only bug ground type we really ever got. That's an interesting type and it's a really uninteresting Pokemon. Lunatone because fuck Roxanne and Emerald Kaizo. Uh, the next set of Pokemon, they suffer from a terrible disease that I personally call middle stage syndrome. There's just a lot of Pokemon lines that come up with a cool first stage and come up with a cool third stage and then they're like, fuck, we need a middle stage for this and then they just squish something in between. And here's all Pokemon that, in my opinion, suffer from this. Prinplup, Staravia, Gabite, Servine, Pignight, Herdier, Vanillish, Frogadier, Flechinder, Dualblade, Torracat, Hatrim, Dracloak, Quaxwell, and Arctabax. I just like it when the middle stage adds something else into the mix and a different thing into the design. These don't do that. I just feel like the Shinx, Luxio, and Luxray line are such a failure. They're just trying so hard to be cool, and their faces look so dorky. Raging Gigas just has a confusing color palette to me. Chinchu did not need to have those eyes at all. Wooper, every time this Pokemon is on my screen, my chat spams small ant in the chat, and it's really annoying. Why did this become so vertical? Delibird, its sack is actually its tail. And for some reason, learning that made me really uncomfortable and made me feel a sense of body horror. And I never want to look at this Pokemon again. What does this even have to do with Delibird? You just take a thing and then you turn it into a cannon. You could have done that with literally every Pokemon. There was so many interesting ways to make a whale Pokemon and you just chose the laziest one. I promise this is the only time I'm going to say this. Normally, I hate this argument so much because I've been on the internet since Gen 4 was announced and I read that every single time a new Pokemon generation was announced, but <sighs> this doesn't look like a Pokemon. Man, Rapidash is so frustrating to use in Nuzlocks. It's a fast fire type, which is something you want in Nuzlocks, but because of the way the learn set works and its stat distribution works, it can't actually ever perform being a fast fire type. It's like a fast normal type that doesn't get a stab boost. It's 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 so frustrating to play. I, I, I hate getting this as my encounter, which is why it's down here. 
Uh, Snubble. It just, I, I hate every dog that looks like this, so I hate this. Three Pokemon that just look too much like a cock and I will never be able to take seriously. Kabusk and Palkia and Maridon. Why does Nuzleaf have nipples? What? Kecleon could have been really cool, I think. But the signature ability that they gave it is so damn useless, and it never gets to be a Chameleon Pokemon. And by the time it got Protean as an ability, Protean was also the signature ability of Greninja, and it just, it, it kind of lost its own identity. And I think that's really sad. Speaking of Pokemon that could have had a cool identity, but didn't, uh, Carnivine. All Carnivine needed was, like, an interesting ability to make it into an actual Venus Fly Trap, like, just a unique signature ability that's about, like, trapping opponents, and it could have been cool, but now it's just, like, a really useless grass type. Again, a lot of Pokemon, I think, suffer from not having their designs underlined by gameplay mechanics. That's something that's really important to me. I just don't understand what Glalie's supposed to be. There's so many ice types that are, like, so uninteresting. Tranquil and Unpheasant just... I, I feel like Pitov was setting something completely different up, and these guys are just so uninspired. Kyurem, while not being as boring as Necrozma, this Pokemon on its own just looks unfinished, and I think the concept of like, oh, it's getting fused with the other powerful dragon is like, okay, man, like, Digimon Season 2 was like 10 years ago, okay, can we... It's it's not that interesting of a concept. Don't know what to do with Eternatus. It's I what 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 am I even looking at here? Mabostiff looks like it smells really really bad. Farfetch'd is a really interesting case because I thought I used to like this Pokemon and it was just held back by being like terrible gameplay wise, but then every ROM hack ever, every enhancement hack ever tries to make Farfetch viable and interesting, and Farfetch usually ends up being really overpowered in those games, and I end up using it. And then you just kind of realize, like, okay, maybe this Pokemon just didn't have that much going for it. Maybe it was just a bird holding a leak, and that's not enough to make an interesting Pokemon. Politoed is also, like, such a failure, again, in the Poliwhirl line, because you had an interesting idea of a tadpole that doesn't become a frog, but then a generation later, you made a frog anyway. Wismer, when I see the back sprite in 3D of this Pokemon, they make me look at its butthole and I don't want to see that. My main problem with the Sandile, Croc, Rock, Crocodile line, and I'm putting them all together here because they work very coherently as a line, is that I don't get enough ground type from this. Where is the sand? If it wasn't connected to its first two evolutions, Crocodile wouldn't even register as a ground type, right? Like, where did the sand aspect go? Evatel is another Pokemon where I just don't understand what they were going for, and it just looks like a slab of meat. Suwaddle, Swadloon, Leveny, so forgettable, nobody cares. Cryogonal is just like another uninteresting ice type where that they just had no inspiration on what to make. Tyrantrum is like, <sighs> okay guys, fine, we'll give you a T-Rex Pokemon. I feel like Pokemon set was setting itself apart by not going to the obviously cool animals to make Pokemon out of. Carbink and Diancie are down here because I just don't understand why both of these exist and are like not connected to each other. I feel like one would have been fine here. Alakazam feels like such an unsatisfying conclusion to the Abra evolution line. Like they were setting up something interesting and the the design of Alakazam is just way worse. Mr. Mime, I'm sorry. I like they tried to do like a creepy vibe Pokemon and still keep it cute and I just don't vibe with it. I, it. I think they failed. Yanma is such an infuriating Pokemon to encounter in Nuzlocke, especially if Yanmega isn't available in that generation because that Pokemon always sucks and you always encounter it fucking mid or late game. Beautifly. We just didn't need another butterfly. Like, I understand you wanted to do a cool branching evolution thing, but like, it's not interesting enough. Swalot? It's, it's literally only the diamond shapes on its design to me that throw me off. Like, I don't... Wh what, what were they going for there? Cast form. Is it boobs? Is it balls? Is my mind ruined? Who knows, but I don't like looking at it. Chimeco, there's nothing that makes this Pokemon interesting. Deoxys is conceptually so cool, but I feel like you just failed to make the forms distinct enough from each other. The normal and attack form are already so close design-wise. The fact that the normal form exists at all kind of destroys the rest of the concept, I feel like because its stats are already so similar to attack, I, I feel like this needed a little bit more refinement. I think the middleman, in case of the base form, should have just been cut, and it should have just been three different forms that can change between. Cherim! It's cool to make a Pokemon that's rewarded for being in Sun, but not be a fire type, but like, Sun is kind of hard to set up. Make the reward actually good. Like, the Pokemon still sucks even in Sun. It just, make it really bad not in Sun, and then make it really good in Sun. Don't like, make it terrible in both. Who wants to play with that? 
here's some more Gen 4 Pokemon that I think just do not work as evolutions. Uh, Togekiss, why is this why is this triangle the resolution of that? Gliscor is an evolution for a Pokemon that, in my opinion, design-wise, didn't really need an evolution, and I think Gliscor is just so much uglier than Gligar. Uh, it's fun to use, it's a really cool Pokemon to use, it's just design-wise, I think it just tries too hard to be a badass Gligar. Porygon Z is another Pokemon whose existence eludes me. Yamask and Cafagragus are just so lazy. It's like, okay, we need a spooky concept. Mummies! It's it's a haunted Egyptian tomb. Well, good, good job, guys. Deerling and Sawsbuck are the type of Pokemon that only exist to promote like a generational gimmick that then doesn't exist in later generations, and it puts these Pokemon in a really awkward spot. Chestnut had an interesting idea, and it was cool that they tried to go for like the knight the mage and the rogue in in the gen 6 starters but like chestnut's proportions don't make it look like a tanky character at all the lanky arms and legs just don't work here whatsoever flabibi and florges are actually the first fairy types in the gen 6 decks and they just look like grass types like if these existed before the fairy type and then they got changed in Gen 6 to a fairy type, like Clefable did, for example, everyone would be like, that doesn't make any sense, why didn't you believe them as grass types? Lycanroc Midnight, there's too much furry power going on here, you need to turn the furry meter way the fuck down. Toxapex, I just have trouble imagining this Pokemon as this terrifying underwater creature, I just, it doesn't... The concept doesn't work for me and the colors make it less terrifying to me. Cinder Ace. This Pokemon just looks like it would be really annoying to deal with. Feeble. You forgot that this Pokemon existed. We waited so long for a Stantler evolution and this is what we get? Bramblin and Bramblegast are just too lazy, not distinct enough from each other, and the eyes look drawn on. Chatot. I'm just mad that we can't say stuff into the microphone anymore that Chowdot then repeats. That was a really cute feature. Like, yeah, it got abused in the online mode, but wasn't it really cool to, like, teach your Pokemon what it would say and then have it say it back to you? Like, it's a really cute way to interact with your... I don't know. I, I don't like that they took that away from us. Tynamo just doesn't really fit into the rest of its evolution line. I, th I think Bisharp's design is a little bit too all over the place. They tried to add too many things to make it cool. Stonejourner only exists because they were like, oh, we need a Stonehenge Pokemon, and then they went with the first idea. Belly Bolt is, is like the fake eyes thing already exists on another set of Pokemon and they did it way better. And it doesn't make any sense for this Pokemon to have that. Don't get me wrong, Jolteon's very fun to use in Nuzlocke, I really like it. This Pokemon is just spiky dog, like, don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Feraligator, those butt cheeks from the Gen 3 Backsprite will haunt me forever and I can never take this Pokemon seriously again. Speaking of not being able to take Pokemon seriously, Celebi is a legendary fairy but its head is just an onion and I just... Agron is ridiculously overrated. This is the type of Pokemon that you think is badass when you're 13, and then you carry that belief into your 20s because you never re-examine it. I'm just put off by Victini's bug eyes. I don't know what those are doing here. So why is the sand castle haunted? You can't just make every new ghost Pokemon random everyday item that you saw on vacation, but it's haunted. Zarude. I'm confused why this Pokemon exists. Small of Dolov and Arboliva just scream in your face that the designers went, Oh, we need a st standard grass type that has three st evolutions because every generation has that. What's the first plant that you associate with Spain? Oh, olives. Let's. It's just. It's similar to Stonjourno. I think it's a little bit lazy. I also don't understand how this is part normal type. Skarmory is one of the Pokemon that I think got very ruined by the fact that from Gen 6 onwards, all 3D models of flying types were in their flying pose, and it robs so many Pokemon of so much personality. But also, the wings are just genuinely ugly here. Tyranitar only lands this low because it has a genuinely horrifyingly terrible Mega. What is this? Masquerain is just trying to do too many things at once. I think it's a very overloaded design. Magnezone, bit of a controversial pick here, but I think this Pokemon is not what I thought the next progression of Magneton would be. Timber, Girder, and Conkelder, I think are actually a really cool line that show like a really interesting progress in like the thing that it's holding, I think that's super cool, but it the veins and the weird heads and everything just give me the creeps. It, it's, it's body horror vibes, I don't like it. Another controversial pick in the bottom third of my Pokemon is Aegislash. Now look, this is a Pokemon that does one thing that I like really well, and that's integrating its design principles into the gameplay mechanics. I just can't help but look at this Pokemon 
and be like, if this wasn't a Pokemon, just a regular mob, a regular NPC villain in an RPG, you walk into like a castle and three of these things attack you. I think you wouldn't go like, oh wow, that's like a really interestingly designed villain. It's just possessed sword and shield. And there's a little bit too many ghost types that are just possessed thing. So I think the design itself just doesn't follow through here. Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist are just also very lazy of like, oh, what could another grass ghost type be? Oh, uh, pump pumpkins are scary. Beware just feels like a design that I've seen in so many other franchises done the exact same way. como oh, the layered scales looks really ugly. Roly Coly, Carcoal, and Colossal. The Colossal line, fantastic idea. And I love the dedication to this line. I genuinely admire the dedication to this line. The execution is so unesthetic that I just can't rate this any higher. Reggie Drago gotta be such a lazy design, man. They were like, okay, let's make two new Reggies. And the first one they came up with was really cool. The only way that this is associated with dragons is by having a dragon thing on it. It, it just doesn't work, I'm sorry. Uh, Kingabit doesn't really follow through on what Bishop tried to do for looking like a chess figure. Like, it's the evolution, it's the king, but it doesn't actually look like a traditional king chess figure at all. Next up is Venusaur. I just always thought that making it have a whole tree trunk sprout out of his back was a little much. Like, here, here's the, the Pokemon Green Sprite where it's just getting crushed by the the... the plant on it, but I think it's a little much. Wigglytuff. Every single time I get this Pokemon in a, in a Nuzlocke, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna make it work this time. I promise. No, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be so sick. And it never fails to just be a completely disappointing Nuzlocke team member. Seedra is just a spiky seahorse. Jinx. I know it, it feels natural because it's what we were told from generation one on, but like actually think about this. How exactly is this an ice type? Scizor is trying way too hard to be badass. Another badass design that just doesn't work is Garchomp, and that's just because its pose and the way that it moves and interacts doesn't seem like it would be a land shark. I just can't imagine being terrified of this in real life. The Pidgey line just always disappoints. It's never fun to use. Victory Bell could have been a cool concept, but needed a signature move or ability. Onyx is just so frustrating to use in Nuzlocke because of its terrible attack stat. It feels like Onyx used to have a really high attack stat, but then in playtest, people kept losing to Brock in the first gym, so they nerfed Onyx's attack stat and he got stuck with it. That's my personal fan theory, because there's no reason it should be this low. Houndoom is just trying too hard to be edgy. Sceptile, just the, 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 again, the entire tree growing out of its backside, it's a little much. I've tried to make this Pokemon work so many times in Nuzlocke, and it's always so bad. Melodic is supposed to be really beautiful, and I don't think this Pokemon looks beautiful at all. I'm sorry, Alpha Rad, but like, dog with two badass knives sticking out of it not enough for me so cool if it didn't have such a dog shit typing with rock because it makes the whole aspect of it being this wall that you can't get through not work because its defensive typing is actually quite bad this needed to be a pure steel type or it needed a signature ability to get rid of the rock weaknesses or something like that floatzel i just don't like the ring around it, it doesn't make any anatomical sense. I think Honchkrow leans a little bit too hard into the Mafia angle. I think it makes the design look a little corny. Solosis Diosion of Reuniclus was a cool idea, but I feel like they didn't really follow through on the cell dividing principle here. I just don't understand what Fr Frillish and Jellicent are supposed to be and why they got the gender difference and how these are even ghosts. I I, I don't get it. The proportions of a it just don't work for me. It looks very, it's, it's unsatisfying to look at. How is Slitherwing a part fighting type? I, it doesn't make any sense. Ducktrio is arguably an even lazier design than Diglett, but it's just saved by the fact that it's so damn fun to use in Nuzlocke because a fast Pokemon that spams Stab Earthquake is just really nice to use, but its design still sucks. What is Tangela supposed to be? Why is it wearing, like, shoes? How does Ampharos' design follow from a sheep? I've never understood this. This looks so alien. Fortress is so damn fun to use in Nuzlocke, but like, again, the design makes no sense to me here. Why does it have like pipes sticking out of it? What is the color scheme supposed to be? Samurott need to be bipedal. It really, really, really shouldn't have been on four legs. In fact, here's a screenshot of bipedal Samurott. That's way cooler. I don't understand why Archeops got the defiant ability. Cupchu is really cute, but I'm really put off by the snot. Zamazenta just looks corny. 
Masquerada is pretty cool, but I feel like we already had the grass type masked Avenger in Rosa Raid. Kabutops is Scyther recolored with a Kabuto stuck on it. This design is really lazy. Nose Pass is cool conceptually, but I just don't like the enlarged body part kind of design. They just all look really creepy and disgusting to me. Sharpedo. Hey, you combined a shark and a torpedo, but why? This is another controversial pick, but Salamence has always looked pretty unfinished to me. The wings just don't work. I think it fails to be as cool as it could be. Cresselia, the moon on its neck is a little bit too much and too on the nose. I think the crescent shapes around it would have been enough. The genies are actually really cool in the sense that they're, they still look very different from each other, but they all have very, very similar design principles. And Enamorous, I think, deviates from those too much. Houndstone is not different enough from its pre-evolution. Iron Leaves does not add any interesting twists to the design of Verizion. Swampert's hands have just always really put me off. The last Pokemon in the bottom third in the bad Pokemon section is going to be Sandy Shocks. Let's move on to the good Pokemon. Welcome back. Starting us off in the good Pokemon section is Sandy Shocks. Trubbish is just such a cute little trash bag. I just want to pet him and then push him far away. Ponyard actually does really well at being a little pawn. Aurorus is an actually interesting take on a dinosaur Pokemon. Firo carries so hard in both Emerald and Crystal Kaizo. Early game Firo is always going to be in my heart because of that. Both Vulpixes are just so goddamn cute. Articuno has somehow found its way into my heart recently. I don't know, it just, I think, I think it's an interesting little bird. And also hot take, it's the only Gen 1 Ice type that actually feels like it's an Ice type. Every other Gen 1 Ice type, put them all on screen, would work just as well if you strip the ice type away from them. None of these look like actual ice types, except for Articuno. I'm very impressed that the first big dragon that they made was like a cute dragon. Kind of a badass dragon, but also a cute dragon. This It just has so much more personality than all the badass pseudo-legendary dragons that came after it. Noctowl is just such a cool owl. I wish Noctowl was more useful. Maybe it should have been a dark type. Espeon is a pretty cool evolution, unfortunately. Teddy Ursa is so damn adorable. Elekid is a baby Pokemon done right. It's a different design. It's not just the original design shrunken down. It actually thinks of something new, and I think Elekid's proportions are really cool to look at. Trigo just looks like it'd be so fun to be around. Lotad is so cute and derpy in the way that only Pokemon can be. Yanmega is such a satisfying evolution to such a dog shit Pokemon. It feels so nice that we actually got this. Very similar to Mamoswine, who's also in this spot. Roggenrola is just cute. I like it. I don't know about the whole Darmanitan Zen business. I've I don't I've never really understood that, but I think Darmanitan just as the concept of a fireball that just wreaks havoc through enemy teams works really well. Its design is underlined by its game mechanics. Electros is a badass eel, and I like eels. Talonflame is just so cool in Pokemon Unite. Dragalge. I think there should be more Pokemon that live in water that aren't strictly water types. Dragalge is like one of the only Pokemon that dares to do this. Formantis just has a cool haircut. Tapu Bulu is the only Tapu that dares to do something interesting with its design. Blipbug into Dottler into Orbeetle is such a cool progression of Pokemon. This is such a weird and out there design and it's so interesting. Ivysaur is only up here because his moves are so cool in Smash Bros. Truly, Venomoth has nothing interesting about its design. I just really like Quiver Dance Sweepers and Nuzlocks. Kangaskhan just is such an interesting take on a kangaroo, and also, it's one of the rare Megas that actually expands on the existing design. Dunsparce is such a weirdo. I love that you can barely trace back what this Pokemon was even supposed to be based on. Slackoth, Vigoroth, and Slacking is an evolution line that tells a story, which I think is really cool. It's a lazy kid, grows up, he tries really hard, but then decides it's not really worth it. I just like Ramperdose's shape language. It's much more of a cartoon dinosaur, and I like that. Skuntank is, for some reason, just always so reliable in my Nuzlocke. It's like it's always there. It's never a carry, but I can always depend on it. I love Pokemon that have weird strategies involving status effects, and Sigilyphs is, like, actually usable in Nuzlocke. It's pretty cool. Emolga. Finally, someone did a Pika clone correctly and creatively. Rufflet is weird because I feel like it's one of the only flying types that looks like a real bird. Does that make sense? Sland, it just looks like it scuttles and scatters along and it's such a it's it's its shape looks so much like a, a cute little lizard i i just it works so well cloth's original artwork makes it look so derpy and cute i think it doesn't come across in 3d at all and it's kind of a reminder of how much we lost when we lost 2d sprites walking wake is such a great dinosaur version of suicune i don't know what it is about sand slash it's not that interesting to use in nuzlocke it's always missing a good ground type move but 
Something about those claws just looks nice. Magnemite is so nice to have in early game Nuzlocke. It's like it carries you through every annoying Pokemon possible. Executor and especially Alolan Executor just have so much personality and there's such a weird out there design that because it's been around for 25 years just makes intuitive sense to us. I couldn't put Gyarados any lower on this list just because he's always there in Nuzlocke and he's always great no matter what generation. You can always capture a Magikarp and Gyarados is there. Apom just looks like it would be so fun to be around. Heracross's typing puts it in such a unique position in Nuzlocke where it's it's a strong Pokemon, but it's not overpowered and fulfills really unique roles that no other Pokemon can, and that's always really fun to use. Octillery's an octopus in a tank, man. That's got his own move called Octazooka. That's cool. Bonsly is like the best baby Pokemon. It takes an existing design and like actually imagines what the baby of that would look like and incorporating like a bonsai design, a fake bonsai of a fake tree, that's fucking genius. I just like Pokemon that are, that just are big mouths. And for what it's worth, Gibble actually kind of pulls off the Landshark vibe much more than Garchomp does. Dialga's really cool, like really, really cool. I just wish it incorporated the Pokemon of Time design a little bit more in its gameplay mechanics. I wish Roar of Time felt like a move that actually maybe turned back time for a turn or something. Snivy is just oozing personality, and I love how the arrogant little shit design resolves into Superior, who is like actually royalty. I like how Snivy is rewarded for its snideness. That's such an interesting take on that design. Whimsicott is just really fun to use. Prankster is a great ability. Me and Xiao is such a cool take on the fighting type. I really like the more elegant and slender fighting types. At first I thought Zygarde's design was all over the place and didn't make any sense, but it, it's like, it's an alien, and then it kind of makes sense again. Crabrawler is so cool. He looks like he would actually drop down from berry trees and try to beat you up. It's such a shame that his evolution is so ugly. Shinodic looks like it's getting a blowjob from a Jigglypuff, and you will never be able to unsee that ever again, and I think that's really funny. Oh my god, we got a regional normal type with an actual personality. That's crazy. Speaking of personality, Gloom. It's, it, it looks so disgusting. They did that so well without making it look unappealing. See, it's, it's possible. It doesn't have to be Bruxish. Zatu's wing is an Among Us, and also synchronized nature strats are really fun in Nuzlocke. Swinub's so cute, I just want to pick it up, go through its hair, it'd probably be really rough and cold for some reason, but it's so cute. Larvitar is really cute while still giving you the vibe that it's going to turn into something really powerful. Dustox is carried alone by the fact that this Pokemon is busted in early game Nuzlocke, and again, so fun to use. Shedinja is really cool conceptually. I wish it had a different ability. I think the ability is too game warping and is really boring for Nuzlocke. See Ludwig's run that I helped him cheat in. But leaving behind your dead shell, which then becomes a Pokemon, that's really cool. Carvana is just such a perfect embodiment of a little fucking piece of shit fish that wants to do nothing but bite you. I love it. Similarly, and you can see a trend here again with the big mouth Pokemon, Trapinch just wants to bite you. It works. If you had to have sex with one of the three Combi faces, which one would it be? Finneon Luminion fulfill a very important role that is very underestimated in Nuzlocke. Finneon and Luminion on their own are really boring, but Finneon and Luminion are background Pokemon. Search up Pokemon Underwater Desktop right now, and you'll get a bunch of different artwork of Pokemon Underwater, and I almost guarantee that all of them are going to have Finneon and Luminion in it. These are the type of Pokemon that just make the Pokemon world come alive. They have to be kind of boring fish designs because they're supposed to populate this world. Not every Pokemon can be super interesting. Probo Pass is just so over the top and it somehow now works as opposed to Nose Pass. Terrakion is the only one of the three Musketeers that I can really take seriously. Furfru is not a great design at all and it, all the haircut stuff is terrible, but for some reason this Pokemon is just such a Giga Chad that is so powerful when you, whenever you face it in Nuzlocke or when you use it yourself. There is no reason this thing should be as bulky as it is. Esper. This is how you do a creepy child Pokemon. For just being a possessed sword, I just think the designs on this work really well. It looks really elegant. Wooloo. It's just a cute sheep, man. Don't overthink it. Cramorant, again, has so much personality. Surfetched is what Farfetch's design should actually be like. They utilized every part of the leak here, and I think that's so cool to go so all in on the bird wielding a leak thing. More Peko. Oh my god, is that an actual creative Pika clone? 
that's crazy. It's a dog with a sword in its mouth and it actually looks really cool, unfortunately. Frigabax just looks like it's up to no good. Wo Chien is such a good little snail, oh my god. Coridon is so cute when it runs. Persian always critting when it uses slash in Gen 1 is just really cool. It does the Gen 1 thing where it kind of still only looks like animal it's based on, but not really anymore. Shuckle's so brilliant, man. <laughs> it's basically just the mold inside of your fridge. Like, you leave an iced tea in the fridge for too long and it's got mold in it. That's, that's Shuckle. Bronzor and Bronzor are just one of those lines that complements each other so well, even though it's two, like, very distinctly different objects. The design on it is just very elegant. Mantyke is another baby Pokemon that works really well by recontextualizing its evolution and by making an interesting gameplay mechanic, the evolution method. Like, Mantine always swim around with Remoraid, so Mantyke evolves by being in a party with Remoraid. Come on, that's pretty cool. Diggersby, again, just has such a cool and sassy personality where you just, you know he's up to no good when he gets into a fight. Rowlet is such a great take on an owl. Oh my god, he's so cute. The Oricorio are just, you take different dancing styles and you incorporate them into the design so well and even, like, complemented by game mechanics by the typing and the, the the moves it's it's brilliant quaxley has so much personality and i hate that charizard is up so high here but man mega charizard x is so badass okay so most of you probably already know this but just to reiterate why i think voltorb is such a cool design voltorb is Pokemon's take on the classic RPG Mimic. The RPG Mimic is an enemy that is disguising itself as a treasure chest that you open and then it fucking eats you. And Voltorb works in the same way because the way that items are disguised in the Pokemon games are through Pokeballs. And Voltorbs actually appear like that in the overworld of the game. It's a genius recontextualization of those old RPG elements into the modern style of Pokemon. It's so cool. And Fungus very similarly recontextualized that again, but this time as a plant that wants to spread its spores by being picked up. Mew is just cool because it learns every move and has such a balanced stat distribution that it can be anything in a competitive match, and I think that's awesome. I feel like Quilava is a middle stage done the right way. This shape is just so unique to it, and the shapes of the other two work very independently of that. I think it's a great evolution line. Pochiana is just a really cute puppy. Come on. For some reason, Breloom comes up in like every Nuzlocke I ever play, and it's always really fun to play with. It's got like really interesting scaling, where it doesn't learn that many good fighting type moves early on, but its typing is just really good, and just having one good fighting type move is awesome, and its stat distribution lends itself really well, and then later it scales really well because it gets Spore. It's just, it has so many different uses within a Nuzlocke, and it's always interesting. Sableye is just such a unique creature, it's very Pokemon, and I love its Mega so much. Spoink is another just very creative design for something. It kind of gets lost when it evolves, but Spoink itself, the spring with the, the pearl on, there's, there's a lot going on here, and it's very coherent. Bennett treads the line perfectly of being creepy while still, like, looking like a Pokemon and a creature that you'd actually want to interact with. Clampearl and Love Disk are both only here because of early game Emerald Kaizo. This duo was just so good at decimating the fighting types of Brawly. It's just etched into my mind, the charm and shell armor combo. That Those two Pokemon have a special place in my heart just because of that. Munchlax is such a perfect baby form for Snorlax. What a great design. They just, they nailed it. They gave this thing its own personality, and it still looks like it flows into Snorlax perfectly. Galate is such a great thematic conclusion of the Ralts line, the, the little empath that's overwhelmed with feeling other people's emotions, and Gallade using that as like a hero that fights for others, this should have always been part of the original evolution line. There's just something about Lipard that just makes it always interesting to use and has its own personality that I really like. Oranguru and Pissimian are Pokemon that are designed to use in double battles whose abilities actually make them useful and interesting in double battles. There's just something about Barraskewta that makes it look so cool and badass. Maybe I just like fish like that. Ice Q is so corny, and I love it when they commit to stupid designs like this. Dondozo and Tatsugiru are also just such interesting and unique ideas. Screamtail is what a Paradox Pokemon should be, a recontextualization of the original Pokemon. I think this is really cool. For some reason, Ninetales is always the fast fire type in my Nuzlocke's to clutch up. It, it, it doesn't have anything that makes it particularly special in that regard, but... It's just always there, and I think it's a really elegant design that works both in its fire and its ice-type form. 
Dodrio is the three-headed design from Gen 1 that actually makes sense and is done right. The three heads all having three different personalities is really cool. But more importantly, this Pokemon is also, again, just really fun to use in Nuzlocke. It's a really powerful, fun Pokemon. Omastar is another reliable Gen 1 Pokemon that always clutches up in Nuzlocke and is also just a really badass design. Ledian is a Pokemon that is made interesting only by its gameplay mechanics because of its weird learn set that actually happens to be fantastic in Nuzlocke. This Pokemon is like really fun to use and very hard to use as a Nuzlocke player. Kyogre actually looks like the god of the sea. I think that's cool. La Punny for some reason gets away with being horny and it makes sense without it being tasteless. I, I, I still remember when Platinum first released and they updated the shoddy battle servers back in the day for Gen 4 competitive and you could use Shame and Sky and you could just make people permanently flinch with Serene Grace Air Slash and I just have very fond memories of people rage quitting over that. Galvantula does such a good job of looking like an actual spider while not looking like a terrifying spider. It's that perfect interwoven mix of beast and cute creature that Pokemon sometimes does so well. Dino is a really underrated Pokemon. I, I think this Pokemon looks really cool. Nobody ever has it on their team because you instantly evolve into Hydreigon once you get it in the late game, but if this was in the early game of some games, I think some people would actually appreciate it. Mudbray just has the perfect proportions for a cute horse Pokemon. Lurantis is a reverse stick insect. It is a plant pretending to be a bug. All the Gen 8 fossils are so fucking smart. They're such cool designs. I love them so much. They're so cute. They're so derpy, and the history that they're based on is so intelligent. Like, it's the opposite of picking Olives or Stonehenge for, for Pokemon that are related to that region by just picking, like, actually interesting stories from a region's background and telling them through those Pokemon. Basculegion takes a superfluous and boring Pokemon like Basculin and recontextualizes into an evolution line that makes it actually unique, and I think that is the best type of new added evolution. Reverum, they wanted to make an engine Pokemon, and they really tried, and they goddamn succeeded. This Pokemon is so cool. Kingler is a surprisingly unique Pokemon to use in Nuzlocke because of its really interesting stat distribution and because of the fact that you can get it really early usually by fishing and then evolving quite early. I'm also just a big fan of asymmetric design. Blossom feels like a genuinely cute resolution to the ugly gloom evolution line. Gligar feels like such a unique monster that is so Pokemon, just a happy, cool, badass, a lot of personality, flying little scorpion. Raikou's unfortunately just really badass. Grovile is a middle stage done right. It's very unique, and it's got its own contributions to the evolution line. This is how you do it. Maybe this is a recency bias, but I've really learned to like camera up since the run and bun video. Barboach and Whizcash are the water ground types that show up to every Nuzlocke and always shake things up. These Pokemon are not that great late game, but if you get them early or mid game, they're just always reliable. Latios and Latios work really well as this pair of twins that are just distinguishable enough from another while still having a strong direction and coherence between them, and I think they're just really unique and badass designs. And yeah, Rayquaza is badass too. It's it's a snake dragon with jet engines attached. Like, come on, how are you not going to like that? Infernape goes to such great lengths to be interesting and unique, and to really feel like a burning monkey that punches people with flames, and it succeeds in that. Tangaroth is another evolution that recontextualizes a Pokemon that was kind of lost before, like Tangela. Suddenly, with Tangaroth existing, I feel like Tangela makes so much more sense. Oshawott is such a brilliant design, and so is Dewat. Using the Razor Shell as their weapon is so cool. It's one of the only instances where a Pokemon using a weapon actually kind of makes sense. It feels like an animal like that would actually do that. Wubat and Swubat is one of the instances of Gen 5 actually successfully recontextualizing a Gen 1 Pokemon because the Gen 5 dex was kind of supposed to be a reboot of the Gen 1 dex, and there's a few times where they just mindlessly copy and it's kind of bad, but there is also times like this one where they make, an, uh, make a new version of an existing Pokemon that's completely different. Throw and Sock are another example of this happening, uh, another fighting type pair, but these really feel like two, these would be like partners in a sitcom that make jokes at each other. You, you can just tell that these Pokemon are supposed to interact with each other and it makes sense. Audino, my third most controversial smash. Crustal is just such a great interpretation of a hermit crab. I really like vultures, so I'm gonna like Volibee and Manibuzz. Know what else I like? My Little Pony, so Keldeo's up here as well. 
I also just like lizards with very long tails, and Heliolisk, I think, works perfectly in that regard. Hoopa is finally an example of one of the fairy-like mythical Pokemon that actually works. This Pokemon has serious personality and a really cool power. Toucanon, another Pokemon that is just completely unapologetic about where it went with its design. Salazzle, my second most controversial smash. Meteor is a Pokemon that literally only works because of the way its animation was implemented into the game. The way it zips around the screen is... it, it just makes that Pokemon come alive. I love that Tinkatung is very accurately represented through gameplay mechanics. It's weak, it's got a weak attack stat, but it has a really powerful move in Gigaton Hammer. Annihilate? You're telling me Primeape got so angry that it died and came back to life? <sighs> Growlithe is such a good puppy. Abra is such a weird and interesting design. It is so mysterious and so intriguing. Delphox just works as the furry fire magician. The Gudra line is also so brilliant. It's another example of a pseudo-legendary that doesn't try to be badass and is just unique and it works really well. If you just saw Gumi, you'd have no idea where it was going, but it resolves in such a logical way. Listen, Galissapod has its problems, but with proportions like that, I'm just never gonna think it's not badass. Toad School, Wiglet, and Bugtree are all such brilliant recontextualizations of old Gen 1 Pokemon. Like, they've given these Pokemon way more personality than the originals this way, and it makes the other ones seem cooler as well. Butterfree just has a really cool Gigantamax. Nidorino is, like, the essential Pokemon. It is not an identifiable creature at all from the real world, but it makes so much sense as a Pokemon design. Scraggy and Scrafty just ooze personality at you. Gen 5 really turned it up in terms of, we're just gonna pump these Pokemon full of personality. Ferrothorn just makes so much sense as a plant that has been shaped in like harsh environments, and I think it's 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 super unique and interesting for a grass type. Regilecki is the only Reggie that they decided to imbue with personality through the type that it represents. The way it just jumps back and forth through the animation, it's one of the few times where the 3D animations really do work and bring the Pokemon to life. Yeah, Chien Pao's cool. I just like Sabertooth Tigers, what can I say? Clefable just has really genuinely interesting abilities and move pools and succeeds where I always want Wigglytuff to succeed, but Wigglytuff fails. Paris and Parasect are just here because their concept is so unbelievably badass. A spreading zombie fungus that takes over bugs based on real life fungi. God, that's cool. Bayleaf and Meganium are on here because I think they're cool and interesting designs, but also because Crystal Kaizo has made me put these Pokemon into my hearts. They're so damn good in those games. Sneasel is up here because I like asymmetric designs. Sfeel is a round ball and I love him. Darkrai is trying so hard to be badass and somehow it even works on me. Decidueye is such a unique design. I don't think you guys understand. When Gen 7 was announced and we only knew Rowlet, nobody saw this coming. An owl that turns into a, a ghost type archer? That is just so wild, but for some reason it works so well. Oinkalone, my most controversial smash. Tandem Mouse and Mousehold are such a stupid concept, and it it I just respect them so much for doing it. Seeking was never anything special to me until Garbage Green. And from that moment onwards, I could not stop loving this Pokemon. It just emotionally put that Pokemon into my heart. Similarly to Sunflora, who somehow ended up being one of the best Pokemon for early game Emerald Kaizo. Steelix is just so badass. It's just a huge drill that goes through the earth and destroys everything in its path. Magmortar takes a really, really subpar Pokemon from Gen 1 and just pumps it so full of badassery that you can't stop loving it. Like, th this guy's hands are like rocket launchers that shoot giant balls of flame. Like, come on, man. Like, at some point, you just have to give in and love this Pokemon. Arceus is genuinely such a good take on the god of the Pokemon world. I 100% believe that this is the god of this world. I don't question that at all, and I think it works extremely well. I love Primeape because I love Pog, Primeape, and Emerald Kaizo. Tentacruel is like one of those reliable water types in Nuzlocke that just its stat distribution and typing makes it so useful always, and it's also just genuinely really badass. Speaking of badass Pokemon, Scyther. I think Technician is one of the coolest abilities in the game, and Scyther uses it really well, and Scyther is the best user of it. On its surface, Tauros just seems like it's a regular cow design, but somehow it's unique enough and 
it's always really, really fun to use as a really powerful Pokemon that you should never underestimate. I love it. Kabuto, as opposed to its lazy Kabutops evolution, is a pretty unique design that's intriguing when looking at it. Battle Armor Pokemon are just uniquely positioned as these protectors in my heart. Snorlax was my main in Pokemon Unite, and that game made me fall in love with Snorlax. The, the weight on the attacks on Snorlax in that game just works so well, and it made me really appreciate it. Suokun is just really cool. It's such a unique representation of a part of Johto, and it ties the world that it is in so well into its design. Somehow, Bibarel makes it onto this list because it has such a slew of interesting abilities, a weird move pool, a surprisingly really good typing, and for some reason, compared to every other regional normal type, this Pokemon is by far the most unique to play with. Giratina succeeds so much at just looking otherworldly and evil in a, in a non-trivial way, in, in a way where somebody really thought about the design for a long time, and I really appreciate that. I think Zoroark's illusion ability is one of the coolest abilities in the game, and I wish there was more game morphing abilities that tied into the Pokemon's theme like that. Carablast, Escavalier, Shelmet, and Excelgor is another set of Pokemon that just tells a story, and I think the way it tells it is so perfect. I love so much how the evolution method tied into these Pokemon is used to convey what happens with these. It's it's genius. Delmize is just a complete one-off weird idea for a Pokemon and it somehow works so well. Another Pokemon whose idea should have never worked but really does is Apollon and Flapple. Uh, I don't count the other evolution in here. I think that was actually a little bit much. I think they should have committed to one of them, but Flapple is so weird, but it works. It just works. Palfin does a fantastic job incorporating its design idea into the gameplay mechanics. Cloister somehow manages to always be really useful in Nuzlocke's and also in competitive. It, it's just really unique. Ditto is an OG when it comes to a Pokemon that's designed around a unique gimmick and is just completely committed to that, and it works really well. Murkrow's design is so much subtler than its evolutions, and it, it works so well in this form. Macargo is a weird one that I did not expect to see up here, but Macargo is one of those Pokemon that if you put it into the early game of a Nuzlocke, it somehow becomes a really unique and cool and fun to use Pokemon. Just because it's outclassed in the late game of, the, of, of harder ROM hacks doesn't mean that it's a bad Pokemon, it really gets to shine in those environments and shows how unique this Pokemon really is. Kingdra is another Pokemon that you can just always rely on in your Nuzlocke's. I've, it's, it's never failed me. It never exceeds, but it never fails. Hariyama is represented in so many early game Nuzlocke's and it's always just, it's got so much HP for how early it evolves and it's got great damage output. It never feels overpowered because it's quite slow and it's got quite a limited move pool but it does so many things so well. If you just need like a Pokemon to out damage something else, it's got interesting moves like Force Palm that'll paralyze. It's got Fake Out to make it really good in double battles. It's, just, it's got so many things. It's so well balanced. It's got so many great strengths, but also a lot of weaknesses that makes it just this perfect balanced Pokemon that's so fun to use. Drifloon is a complete off the wall design. Drillbur and Excadrill. Drillbur sets up its evolution really well and then Excadrill is just you can hate some of its design elements, but it so unapologetically leans so strongly into how badass it is that you cannot deny that this Pokemon is just, it's peak Gen 5. But what is even more peak Gen 5 is the entire evolution line of Litwick, Lampet, and Chandelure. I think this is a genius idea for a ghost fire type. I think this is the perfect three-stage evolution where every part of it fulfills a distinct purpose. Another fantastic Gen 5 line there's also ghost type is Golet and Golurk, just another genius idea that is just unapologetically executed. Gen 5 just made so many Pokemon that were just badass, undeniably, even if you're a complete Gen 5 hater, you know you like these Pokemon. Clawitzer, just because it's the ultimate asymmetric design and it just, uh, it, it's a really stupid idea done really well. Mimikyu is just also a very, very unique concept that uh, shines through with its gameplay mechanics underlining its design. Santa Scorch is the Gigantamax of this Pokemon is so unbelievably badass. Wobbuffet is another Pokemon that has a unique gimmick that it is completely designed around and it just works. It's a Pokemon that plays very differently from every other Pokemon and it ties into its weird design. Next up I have Metacham. I don't, I still don't know what it is about this Pokemon but it's proportions are just so satisfying to me. Torterra is another perfect execution of an idea. 
I think it's not over the top with how much it carries on its shell. The tree is perfectly selected. It's just a very balanced design. Hippopotas and Hippodon, again, simple idea, executed perfectly. Xerneas just looks so regal. It actually looks like a legendary Pokemon. Marshadow is another legendary that is very unique in its design that I really enjoy. Fuokoko is just, it's a big mouth. What's, it's so cute. What's not to like? Nidoking is a Pokemon that's fun to use in every generation. It always has interesting and unique tools and you can always get it quite early. It's another Pokemon that also never really feels overpowered. I love Azumarill because Azumarill has this meta storyline of becoming better every generation because it has something new added to it. It starts out as this really uninteresting mono water type in Gen 2 and slowly but surely becomes an extremely unique Pokemon. Quagsire is another really reliable water ground type and it's just so damn cute. I love that Hawlucha takes a very unique and difficult to execute typing and just nails it. Next up, shout out to the Impdim, Morgrem, and Grimmsnarl line, which is just, it's, it's, it's a villain Pokemon done so perfectly. I also love Relor and Rapska, another line whose idea sounds completely bonkers when you write it out, but if you just commit to it and do it perfectly, you get something as cool as this. I really love Flamigo. Now, people say that it's only a Flamingo, but I do see in its body, the shape of its body, it looks like a knuckle, like a fist implying that it's a fighting type. Now, other people have claimed that I'm just making this up and this is not actually part of the design. I think this is very intentional. Dun Dun Sparse is just the ultimate troll Pokemon. Dun Sparse was maybe the Pokemon that was the most requested to get an evolution over the years. And when they finally give us one, they give us this. It's that you can't tell me that it's not intentional. They 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 just wanted to troll us, and I so respect that. Psyduck is one of the Pokemon that manages to be really cute while still having a completely unique personality, and I think that's really cool. The entire Gengar line manages to be so unique throughout all its three stages, and I think that's really interesting. None of those three are uniquely that perfect. All three are different from each other while still having some cohesion that it makes for a really enjoyable line, especially because the Gigantamax and the Megaform are also unique in their own way. Lantern is such a perfect take on an anglerfish of turning such a creepy monster into something so happy. I love that. And here they are. You've probably been waiting for them for a while now, but these have climbed in the ranks quite a bit. It's Taylor and Swallow. Uh, it's, it's mostly because of EK, but Pilot also just opened my eyes to how good of a simple design these guys are and how much personality they convey through their design. Surprisingly high on this list compared to where I had it last time is also Torkoal, another shell armor user that just is really uniquely positioned in Nuzlocke to fulfill a great role of just a very defensive physical tank who can also put out special fire type damage. This is a really unique niche that's actually useful way more often than you would think. Uh, Krogunk and Toxicroak are both also up here. These are I mean, just look at them. Look at how cool these guys are. Come on. All the Rodon forms are here as well. I think the concept of a Pokemon that, that inhabits different household devices is... <laughs> I think it's... it's they, 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 they did it so well. I wish they added more forms over the years. For some reason, Whirlipede has just always really appealed to me. There, there's something about its color scheme and its proportions that just... very uh, That's very nice to look at for me. Joltik and Snom are both so perfect and... I don't know how they managed to make them feel so much still like bugs while also making them so cute. It, it's, it's so good. Like compare this to fucking Weedle, man. Uh, up here is also Frozmoth, which is we waited for a long time for an ice bug type, and it was worth the wait. This thing is so great. Umbreon's the coolest evolution, and I won't apologize for it. I think this thing is really cool, and it strikes a really good balance of being interesting and unique gameplay-wise while also having like a lot of personality. Another controversial pick up here is going to be Embor. Now listen, I know before Embor there were other firefighting types, but I just think Embor represents not the fire and the fighting separately, but what those two types have in common, being an unstoppable force that goes through the enemy, and I think that's really cool. Starmie is found up here as well, just because it's huge move pool and just weird design that feels so Pokemon but so alien but still so part of the universe of all these animals just very interesting and weird. Somehow Durant always manages to end up really high in my rankings as well. It's basically just an ant that's made of steel but somehow the design works so perfectly 
so elegantly with the antennas that are also nails and it's it's so fun to use in nuzlocks and in in game greninja is up here just solely because i think using the tongue as a scarf is such an unbelievably genius design idea nk and malamar are another example of perfectly incorporating a pokemon's design elements into its gameplay both with its ability and the way that you evolve it ducklet is the cutest pokemon in the series there's no denying that i don't know if this is cheating but i've reserved it for every single Ultra Beast, because I think Game Freak did such a good job of making the Ultra Beasts feel not like Pokemon, but like their own thing and their own group. And they all, they're all cool, but I just want to put them here because making a type of Pokemon that are not Pokemon and doing so so successfully is a huge risk and I think it super paid off. And getting into what is slowly just straight up my list of all time favorite Pokemon. Next up is Cursola who tells probably the most interesting story of any Pokemon. Chrysola represents all the corals that we have killed, a ghost that comes to haunt us for our sins that we've committed against Mother Nature. But I think what really makes this design work is that it comes two decades after the original introduction of Corsola, who was made during a time when there was still a lot more corals around. And Cursola represents the change in the environment that we have enacted over the years that the Pokemon franchise has existed for. There's some classics that I will just always love um, coming up next here. These are Pokemon whose design I just adore without being able to explain them a lot. Uh, Rattata is up here for some reason. And I just think Rattata works so well as a Pokemon. <laughs> I really like its main primary color, that's one of my favorite colors, and somehow this Pokemon just works. Arcanine is a classic that I don't think I have to explain, and neither do I have to explain Flygon, I think. There's just something about Thunderous the Rain's Claws that looks so cool and badass to me that I will never be able to explain, but I just think this Pokemon is so damn cool. Quillfish is found up here as well. It, it, it's a Pokemon that is carried mainly by the fact that it has so many different little niche uses in, in Nuzlocke's and competitive play by, you know, being a good physical attacker with poison-type moves. It's a water type that resists other water type attacks. It re also resists grass, uh, which is often used for coverage, and it, it, it resists ice, which other water types have for coverage, and they can hit back with poison. All that stuff that Tentacruel does. But it's got all these little nice, unique, small tools like explosions and, and revenge and and just weird little attacks and it, it comes in this package of this just interesting pufferfish badass little brawler fighter design that that is very unique to pokemon don't get me started on dragapult what a fucking cool design maybe this is the starcraft nerd in me because it reminds me of brood lords from that game but the a huge stealth fighter ghost type dragon that shoots little dragon type missiles like how do you come up with that and then put that to paper in such a perfect form? This Pokemon is unbelievable. Donphan is one of those Pokemon that always shows up to the Nuzlocke and always delivers and I've always thought had a badass design and it's here to stay and it's here to prove it. Smeargle is the ultimate example of the Pokemon designed around a gameplay gimmick done exceptionally well. Klefki is not only exceptionally fun to use in Nuzlocke, it's just also a Pokemon that you can really imagine existing in the world that you play in. The same criticism I had of Aegislash could also be applied to Phalanx, but I almost apply it in a reverse way, where this would be a completely standard enemy if you fought this in like a Kirby or Mario game, but having this group of enemies recontextualized as a Pokemon kind of makes it work for me. The polar opposite of one of my most hated Pokemon up here is Poliwrath, another really reliable Nuzlocke Pokemon. I genuinely do think that the idea of the tadpole that doesn't evolve into a tadpole is really good. I just don't understand why they had to also add Poliwhirl. Anorith doesn't see a lot of love because by the time you pick it up in most games, you can instantly evolve it into Armaldo. But I think if there was more games that let you use this early game, people would see that this is such a cool little feisty Pokemon that's very unique and the, the fake eye design is really interesting and it, it I think it's, its silhouette and proportions just work really well. It's very pleasing to me. It's very satisfying. Oh, Relicanth. I've always known that I've 
like this Pokemon. Emerald Kaizo is what made me love this Pokemon. It was obviously on my Elite Four team, but it's also like the fact that it could have two different abilities that both worked for the Elite Four in that game in Swift Swim or in Rockhead was really cool. Frostlass is what Snorunt's evolution should have always been, and the idea of this winter spirit that seduces and traps men in this very weird, almost surreal design shape that they put it in, it's really great. Zekrom just makes my eyes light up because it's a huge ass dragon that has an engine on the back that lights up and goes vroom. How can you not love that? Incineroar is only up here because Smash Bros gave him so much personality, it is unreal. It's actually crazy how much spin-off games will put more personality into Pokemon because the 3D models that are in the games are unable to give them the personality. Driftblim is such a batshit off the wall insane design. Uh, I criticize Sandygast for being just a possessed sandcastle, but for some reason the creepy blimp just works. It's also got some really unique gameplay aspects to it. It doesn't play like any other Pokemon out there. All right, top three time, Crobat. What a redemption from Golbat. It is so simple. It is so fun to use. It is never overpowered while still being really, really strong and making it on every Nuzlocke team ever if you want to. And it's simple design just somehow really, really works. Rank number two is Slowbro. And this is really where the Kaizo games come in strong. How can I not feel a connection to this Pokemon with all that it's done for me? But I also just genuinely think that this design is so weird and wacky and works so well. Finally, is my rank one favorite Pokemon that hasn't changed since the last time. The other ranks have almost all changed, and this is a Pokemon that I don't actually use in Nuzlocke a lot. But I just think Zangoose has that perfect cross-section personality of 90% badass and 10% cute. It's got a really simple design, it's got a really simple color scheme. It's not overpowered, but it's fun to use with interesting strategies. It just sits so well positioned as this well-designed Pokemon that I will always love. And that's only a little bit ruined by its 3D sprites. And that's it. That's every Pokemon ranked from worst to best. As always, I look forward to reading none of your comments about this, and um, I'll see you guys for more Nuzlocke content soon, okay?